Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I think my voice has returned enough to brave a cast. I tried to do one yesterday, but the quality just came out absolutely crappy because my voice started breaking towards the end of the cast and it just wasn't pretty. So I'm going to try again today. A um, couple of announcements first though. First of all, it is about to be the beginning of a new year. Actually, it is the beginning of a new year for a lot of you. Um, so with the new year comes new things. As a lot of you know, I posted a poll. Um, it was basically asking whether you like the speedrun format or you want me to shift more towards the epic side of things. And a lot of you said, why can't you do both? And to that I say, if I do speedruns, I can easily knock out six casts a week. And if I try to do all epics, I can knock out three a week. But if I try to do both, I can't really draw a good line there because it would be like three speedruns in one epic or some odd conglomeration of cast types. And if I try to still knock out six casts and just pull a couple of long ones, the formatting ain't going to be right and it's just going to end up eating a lot of my time. So, with that being said, more of you preferred the epic long casts as opposed to the shorter casts. And I'm also coupling that with the realization that my uh, video list is about 250 deep now. I basically casted every map you can play on and every game situation you can have and we've pretty much seen everything outside of the epics all of the normal gameplay has been recorded on this channel i say all of it that's a little bit facetious but you get what i mean it can get a little humdrum and boring after a while seeing the same things unfold over and over again so i am going to delve into the realm of the epics and uh, like i said on a three cast a week schedule but i'm gonna throw in some new stuff I have a uh, bit of time on my hands since I'm only doing three casts a week, so there's going to be two things that are going to be added. Number one, I am going to preview casts. That means I'm going to miss less stuff, and uh, higher quality games will be assured. And number two, there will be a bit of post-production work that involves things like the extra strategic zoom, which you can see on the left-hand side. Some added video effects, uh, statistics on the screen, some things that I'm going to try in and out of, maybe uh, fast action replay, something of that sort. I'm going to tool around with this replay after I finish, and we will see what happens. Just tell me what you think of it, whether you liked it, whether you hated it. I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it and try this thing. First cast of the new year, here we go. On the southern side, we have Icy Nightmare taking UEF, as well as Soothsayer UEF. And then we've got Do Not Die, an aptly named player. Everyone should take his advice. Uh, you may not adopt the moniker, but definitely take the lifestyle. And then last but not least, the Terror of the High Seas, Total Tuna, although... At the moment, he is in the middle of the desert, so he's probably not quite so terrifying. On the northern side, there is Box taking Seraphim, Speed 2 as Cybern, Verosa as Cybern as well, and then Foehammer taking Aeon. There is no UEF on the northern side, and no, uh, no Aeon on the southern side. So kind of a weird unit mix, double UEF, double Cybern. As far as early aggression goes, we do have a first bomber out for Do Not Die. On a team map like this, sometimes I doubt the merit of a first bomber because teams can, and you see it right there, already got a mobile anti-air out, so that bomber's going to be very, very short-lived. And then a uh, hunter coming out to match some aggression down here. Now this bomber is going to attempt a drop right here, going to miss that engineer and then circle around. I'm going to try to peg down some more engineers. Going to kill one there. And maybe hovering around. Is he going to get a line in? Is he going to? Yep. Yep. There's a drop. I'm going to get shot down, but he did get three engineers before he went. So that bomber was technically worth the mass, but I don't know if it was worth the time. And you can see how low Do Not Die is on the scoreboard and the fact that he has not made any expansion really. This hunter over here, named Taquito, even though it belongs to speed, it is going to dart in and out of the reclaim range, nab an engineer, and then begin firing at another engineer. Pulling a little bit of extra micro, trying to get that last kill. <laughs> Didn't quite get it. If he would have had full health, I'm sure that he would have made it. 
All right, Air Scout headed up towards the northern side. That is going to give some handy dandy intel to the southern team. Do not die being a good teammate. Throwing that out and building an interceptor is going to provide a little air cover. The middle of this map is loaded down with more reclaim than you could ever want. It is the best present ever, although this is a slightly older replay from before I uh, took a little break from casting. So it does not have the presence mod. We've got two, three ACUs in the middle. Let's say two double teaming on speed right now. Verosa is coming over to assist though, and he does have the Tech 2 upgrade on his ACU. So that is going to give him a little bit of a leg up. He's going to throw down a Cerberus to help save Speed, who is getting double teamed at the moment. And yes, ACU is going to break off and not pursue. This is a sad, decrepit excuse of a firebase, but it is the best one that you can hope to have with only two units. It is a Tech 2 point defense and a Tech 1 with walls. And what that does is it allows you to have the range to target mobile artillery that is incoming and keep it away from the Tech 1 point defense. And then the Tech 1 point defense can protect the Tech 2 point defense from tanks. Now, there's another Cerberus going down right here, but that is actually an exercise in pointlessness. Those walls right around there, a waste of mass and time. Uh, the Tech 1 point defense, as you can see off there in the distance, the walls will protect the lower profile of the Tech 1 point defense, but the walls around the Tech 2 point defense really don't do you any good because any tanks firing at the point defense will fire over the tops of the walls. The uh, targeting bone for those units is in the top of the turret, basically the head. Now, there's something here going on that I don't really understand. I see Nightmare is way over here. His base is way over here. I've got a little calm on calm action there, trying to get Do Not Die to stop that upgrade, but Soothsayer's gonna come in and assist it and complete it. That is Tech 2. I don't know why Icy Nightmare is dividing and conquering. Maybe he thought he deserved this mass extractor that Tuna was going to get, or maybe he's buddy-buddy with Tuna and wants to assist his teammate in an upgrade, which he is actually doing. Uh, we do have two TAC launchers online here. Those are possibly going to go after Eco. I don't think two... They are going to fire at the ACU. Now, I have my doubts about this, and it is not going to get the kill. <laughs> As you can see right here, when you have an offset pair uh, between the first and the second missile hitting, there is a tick on the game clock, and that is enough to regen. The ACU will regen one or two health in that game tick, and that will allow it to survive the second tack hit. You've got to build them directly next to each other, else you will not kill a 12,000 health comm with 12,000 damage. Total Tune is going to assist that upgrade right there. That is going to throw some extra health down on Ice Dreamer's ACU. And we will still have a game, although that was very nearly a super sudden death. Ooh, I spy a Fire Beetle. I spy two Fire Beetles. Although, if he's going to try to kill Icy Nightmare, I think by the time he gets down there, there will actually be more health on that than two Fire Beetles can kill. So it's kind of a moot point. Tech 1 Bomber's coming in to soften up these targets over here. Not going to do a terrible amount of damage. There's plenty of air cover from the southern team. So that is going to save that. And Do Not Die, who has not put out a combat unit since that first bomber, is going to get a wave of Yenzines out. Those, that was a relatively early Tech 2 upgrade. Poof goes the Fire Beetles. Um, he did not go for tech 1 spam, which kind of puts this side of the map behind on unit count, which could potentially allow some runbys later. On the left side here, though, we do have a huge mix of tech 2 units. We've got Ilshivas from Box on the northern side, Pillars by the... Uh, actually, I was about to say Pillars by the dozens, but it's about a dozen Pillars over here. And then we've got uh, Pillars and Flapjacks over here for Soothsayer. And between these two groups, they are going to stop this advancement. Box is going to dive down southwards, but I don't know that he's going to do very much damage. 
Looks like he's going to park right in front of the shield. Possibly knock that shield down. Yes, he is going to knock the shield down. And that is going to be the end of that task force. I think Box would have done better to actually go after the build power and the mass extractors over here and focus on this instead of diving into the base because he lost more of his units. But uh, live and learn, hindsight is 2020. And a nice little group of units coming in here. There's two obsidians, a blaze, a group of auroras, and some anti-air. I'm going to come under fire from some Corsairs, and there's a lot of Corsairs on the field. But you got to remember, Corsairs have basically the worst anti-air of any unit that is supposedly dedicated to anti-air, um, you know, not counting the rear flat cannon on the strap bomber or whatever. They have so little DPS per mass versus air, it is absolutely suicidal to go up against interceptors, one on one. One, I think Interceptors would probably beat the Corsairs. Maybe not quite that bad, but I know on 1.5 and Interceptors are significantly less than the Fighter Bombers. I think you get something like 4 to 1 ratio against the Fighter Bombers, and that is just complete and utter rape when you try to go up against those kinds of odds. But, Do Not Die, again being a very helpful teammate, throwing some more interceptors into the mix and he is going to kill off the entirety of the Norse Air Force except for these five interceptors right here and save the lives of most of those Corsairs. Looks like Speed 2 is throwing down that is a Tech 3 upgrade. Box is building himself a firebase Then here on the southern side Icy Nightmare throwing down Tech 3 as well. He has gun and commander shield Total Tuna looks like has Tech 2 on his ACU. And these other guys, not really any ACU upgrades to speak of. Looks like a very nice run by up here though from Icy Nightmare. He is pushing in with his pillars, trying to get somewhere, but I think he is going to get shut down. Speed has his Tech 3 commander up there. That's a whole lot of health and regen on that ACU. He's going to be able to easily deny that push with the help of his teammates, Ilshavas, and that is going to push those back and give a good, nice little chunk of handy-dandy reclaim uh, for the northern team to take advantage of. And right here, Total Tuna is kind of sitting in the middle of a firestorm here. A lot of Aeon units bearing down on his commander. Uh, Icy Nightmare did finish his upgrade. He's going to throw down a shield for his teammate, and Total Tuna is going to start building radar and probably there will be some point defense going down there, but that was an unsuccessful push as well. So a little bit of poking, a little bit of prodding, not a whole lot of uh, successful endeavors going down by either team. And what is this? Box has apparently had to leave. He is walking his ACU to the back and he's gifted his eco to speed, which is going to allow speed to do pretty much whatever he wants because he has that double eco. Focused eco is always nice. He is going to dive right to task and throw down a Monkey Lord right there in the center. So that is probably going to get scouted. I would pretty much guarantee it. Yes, it is already pinged. And uh, I think he may get pushed out. Because we've got Icy Nightmare with that super strong gun, Tech 3, and Shield, ACU, a combined, that is 30, 42,000 health. Yes, 42,000 health and about 80 regen total combined on the shield and ACU, plus that extended gun range and all that other nice stuff that goes with the Tech 3 build suite. Oh my, Corsair's dying by the swarm to these bangers, and then speed is going to be able to overcharge these Tech 2 forces moving in. Unfortunately, there is not enough of a combat presence here to deny a Tech 3 commander accompanied by all of these units. So Icy Nightmare is going to come in, overcharge like there is no tomorrow, trying to kill off as many units as he possibly can. Honestly, he's pulling 69 eco. I would try building Tech 1 point defense. Um, Tech 1 point defense is going to load down the is going to offer a lot of damage 
and uh, in this tide of quarters you're not really worried about the range and you're going to be able to build them what like every two seconds with the uh, t3 commander something like that one second build time <laughs> It says one second, but I think that's rounded down. I think actually it takes like 1.75. Tax incoming. Do not die has built himself a nice little tack base here. He's tacking the HQ over there and a couple of other strategic targets. I imagine he will hit Eco if he can and possibly an ACU. And Ice Streamer is actually not looking very healthy. He's trying to overcharge these bricks. He got the bricks. Do not die. Ever the helpful teammate running in with his shield and I missed the uh, fire beetles <laughs> that will be playing over in the sidebar see this is gonna be part of the thing that's awesome about that sidebar I won't even have to mention it I'm gonna be tracking through the um, tracking through the replays twice to get all kinds of cool footage to stick up there in that extra video bar um, hopefully that will provide a little bit of an insight into the game, show some statistics, show some things that I missed, and show off the beauty that is Supreme Commander. So that will be over there. Actually, it's probably already played while I'm rambling on. And we can move on to other things. It is now a bombardment war. We've got Tech 3 mobile artillery from both sides raining down. This pair is trying to get at Ice Dreamer's ACU, which is dangerously low on health. He is standing under his shield, and he does uh, have mobile shields around him, but he needs to get that shield recharged ASAP uh, so that he is not in any further danger. Got Harvey's moving in on the southern side. This is going to be a little bit hard to deny. We're about to find out how many strats it takes to kill a Harbinger. There are four coming in. And they're, oh, they're all going after the ACU. Very nice, very nice. And he does have the commander shield, and with, even with all the help of those harbingers. Oh, ASF trying to kill the strap bombers. Is it going to be enough? It's going to take three more bombs to kill him. And, oh my, wow. They're all three going to drop. Holy kishmoles. Curse you, Commander Shield! You have let me down! And, yeah, that's what happens when you walk an invincible, quote-unquote, commander up into the, uh, up too close into the enemy base. That Ravager definitely did work there. I see Nightmare does have his Commander Shield back online, and he's throwing down that shield as a, as a, uh, retreat, and doing a little reclaim there as he very well should after killing off well after those harbingers died you definitely want to suck up all of the mass that you can and I do apologize guys my voice is going downhill once again hopefully I will actually make it through the cast we do have um, these tack launchers are still launching away but thanks to these buzz kills and these shields I don't think anybody is really in any danger on the southern side. Drink some of that sweet southern tea. All of you uh, overly cultured Europeans can bite me with your uh, unsweetened hot tea and all of that nasty mess. I like a little tea with my sugar and I like it cold. <laughs> And I probably just terribly offended half of my viewing audience. Alright, Strap Bomber's coming in from speed 2. It looks like Total Tuna is a dead fish. Unless a miracle happens, he's going to walk, he's going to start microing, but it is very hard to micro around the wide AoE of the Seraphim Strat. I think this is going to be the end of Tuna, and some brilliant overcharges there from speed. Tuna is dead these strat bombers are going to start winging around probably going to kill off some eco here in the base laying down some fire for some reason on those factories I don't know why he's focus firing the factories uh, that is the strangest targeting I have ever seen in my life I don't know why that's happening megalith is online for speed 2 and honestly, I don't know what the southern team is going to do. Oh, 
I do know what they should do. They've got two gun commanders with shield and tech three. They should totally just micro underneath that megalith and overcharge it to death. The two of them could kill it very quickly. Yeah, Percival's moving in on the northern side there. Um, these This megalith is making bad life choices. It is walking far too close to the base, chasing that commander down. It's focus firing the commander while these Percivals are closing. And look at the health drop on that. We're going to see six, seven Percivals and one Ravager kill two Ravagers, a Megalith. That was such a low mass investment for the amount of damage done to that Megalith. I've never seen that small amount of mass kill one. That was such terrible targeting priorities from Speed 2. He could have easily wrecked all of that stuff with the Megalith as he slowly crept into the base, but instead just rushed headlong for the ACU kill. But it's a shield. Curse you, Commander Shield! You... <laughs> oh, my voice is terrible. You have foiled my plans once again. And then we do have another Megalith, though. Uh, Varosa, hopefully he can make up for his teammates' poor targeting decisions with this megalith. It is going to wing a little bit more towards the right and go around the stiff opposition here in the center. This attack launcher is going to begin firing at this ACU. I think the ACU possibly took one hit. That looks like a power stall, actually. Um, that is power stall. But the ACU is going to be fine, thanks to the handy-dandy commander shield. Megalith is accompanied by several Tech 3 mobile anti air. And the mid here is going to get hammered by these Percivals. Looks like the Percivals are going to successfully kill that T3 gen. And there's more units moving in. The might of the UEF Tech 3 armies is coming to bear on the northern team. Looks like this Megalith is going to come over a bit and try to push these units away and that is going to work we got a monkey lord coming down and a chicken from the southern team chicken versus megalith is not a good matchup at all main thing you need to remember with the chicken is to always walk towards the target because a lot of the damage done is going to be in that electrical storm that the chicken leaves behind megalith is wisely retreating to the monkey lord and then will re-engage at range Looks like we also have... Ah, no, that is Verosa's commander. I thought for a minute that was an SACU. Should be SACU's building about this time, I would think. Monkey Lore going to come in, intercepting the Athatha. It stopped here for too long, did not walk in enough. It is going to kill the Monkey Lord, but a Monkey Lord for a chicken... Or a chicken for a Monkey Lord is a bad trade when you leave a full health Megalith behind. And we have one brave Percival circling around to the north. And it already has a strap bomber on him. So sad, so sad. Percival is not long for this world. We do have a fat boy online. But I believe that fat boy has zero intel. That is correct. There is no radar here. And it is going to run in and use its OP melee weapons on this megalith. Uh, and I do say that extremely sarcastically finally does have intel and it's going to retreat. This is going to be a problem though. The northern team has claimed the reclaim from two Tech 4 units and that is going to give them the mass to build pretty much whatever the hell they want. And uh, yeah, there is the quantum gateway. So there are going to be SACUs out on the field in the near future. Looks like uh, got number three Megalith, I think? Yes, number three Megalith. I have lost count. Oh well, it does not matter. Yeah, that is number three and number four. And then number two and number three Monkey Lord. Looks like the northern team is going full tech four spam. And the southern team is going mostly tech three spam. You can see over here, Icy Nightmare has a ludicrous amount of support factories burning off 19 mass apiece. He's pulling in 198 seconds only to Verosa with 232 mass income. So 
This is the Eco Powerhouse right here. Pardon me, and clear my throat. I assure you that hearing the, the uh, mic click on and off was much less painful than what you would have heard had I not done so. And this Megalith is going to pull an interesting move here. It's going to park right on top of the dead Megalith and absorb fire. But, you know, with the fat boy shooting at the Megalith, it actually erased the reclaim <laughs> from the previous Megalith. That Megalith is going to die and leave a new wreck, however. Well, at least there aren't two Megalith wrecks. Something that I am seeing here as a running theme, it looks like the southern team does have better team coordination and is microing their units substantially better than the northern team. The northern team has thrown away uh, four megaliths now without really doing any damage at all. Here goes attack launch. Gonna hit the fat boy? Gonna hit the fat boy? Uh, nope. Um... Yeah, and they did get to reclaim two of them right here, and one of the wrecks went to waste, but, I mean, that's that's a huge waste to throw away this many T4s. And it looks like these Monkey Lords are actually going to end up going down as well. They're 13 and 15 health. Uh, it's not enough to do much of anything at all. Broadswords coming in to hammer down on this SACU. Broadswords are an extremely underutilized unit. They do have incredible stats for their cost. They are agile. They are fast. You can dart in and dart out around the anti-air. They don't have the disadvantage of the strap bomber in that the strap bomber overshoots the target into any anti-air in the area. Um, and you can actually micro them on the far side of a target to stay out of range of the SAMs. Now, they are going to take a few hits there, but you can see he didn't lose a single gunship. Those are going to come back to base, and then, uh, ooh, Percy drop. That did not go through over there. Um, the repair, I forget what they're called, the little airfields, the Tech 2 air staging. Air staging, that's what it is. Air staging is ridiculously cheap. Um, it basically costs nothing to repair air units. So if you micro your broadswords well, and then you dump these low health units into air staging, you can get so much out of your mass investment, it's not even funny. Um, they're very powerful units and you need to use them a lot. Uh, you can see right there, zapping off a monkey lord, a huge amount of DPS in that air platform. These two are trying to skirt around to the northern side, but unfortunately, ASF. You got two megaliths bearing down on the mid. This is going to get interesting. Oh, yes, Percy drops. I forgot about those. And we've got Fat Boy, Ravagers, Percivals, all manner of nasty business. One and I think the second one's going to go down. Holy kashmolies. This is terrible. How on earth? That makes five megaliths lost with basically no damage done to the southern team. That is just ridiculous. The southern team coming together with drop, broadsword, and tech 3 coordination backed up by ravagers and a fat boy to drop two megaliths like it ain't no thing. And that is that is the epitome of strategy over brute force right there. Now you can argue there was a lot more brute force in these units, but I would argue that the northern team does have air control, or the potential for air control anyway. Um, they did have a ton of mobile SAMs which were not really positioned adequately to back up against those broadswords, and uh, overall their coordination was not good. They had an equal or superior force if they had microed correctly but they just didn't bring everything together as a team. You can see Box, I did not comment on this earlier, but he started a fab farm here and then got his own base back from Speed. Speed was a good teammate and gave him the air base back and he is going to begin, or he has been building Tech 3 air. And uh, those T3 tanks, looks like they were pushing in for the nuke defense. Is there a nuke? There is a nuke! And it is nearly loaded and also just don't, do not die, you're hurting my head here. 
you do not have all tech 3 mass extractor upgrades and you have three tech 3 mass fabs why would you do this to yourself and the good subcom name that is a terrible decision why would you build this construct it is so inefficient you could get so much more income for that mass investment if you did other things Heck, borrowing an engineer, building a quantum gateway, and getting RAS SACUs would be more efficient than T3 mass fabs. Got TAC launches coming in, gonna drop the shields on those fat boys, well, one of them anyway, and kill that quantum gateway. It's definitely worth the fire on that. And looks like we've got a lot of reclaim laying around that's not getting sucked up by anyone there it's coming in slowly you'd think these guys would jump on the ball a lot quicker though because there are strap bombers laying around there's tech 3 land laying around everywhere so much mass to be had and the guys are just not picking it up very quickly at all all right this nuke is loaded but the problem is the Norse nuke defense is also loaded and they have a skate that's going up. So these guys are going to have to do something about this over here. They're going to have to kill off that nuke defense and nuke that son of a gun off the face of planet Earth or something of the sort. Got a megalith moving in on this Percival push over here. And this time the micro is good. He is backing that megalith away. He is maximizing the kiting potential of that unit just mowing down Percival after Percival on that going to advance and chase and the area is secure backed up by an SACU there that does provide the stun against T3 units tack launch my bets on the SACU and kaboom there it is Got another megalith. Another megalith. Megaliths everywhere. I don't think I've ever seen this many megaliths built in one game. Now I gotta say, I I used to be a huge fan of the GC, and I do like the Fat Boy. But honestly, I think the Megalith is probably the most overbearingly strong T4 as far as direct fire goes, because it does have that nice little area of effect. It's not a whole lot of area of effect, but there is Da area damage on the megalith and it is just so brutally strong with so much health and then it's also handy in the navy so overall I, I really love this unit it is probably the one thing that I will build when I go cyber We've got six transports fully loaded with Percival's icy nightmare has decided that it is definitely time for a drop He's going to be moving off to the right, but that was pinged over here by speed. Looks like ASF are going to move in that direction. Got ASF to block. Red, kind of patrolling, don't die, is going to push his ASF over to the right as well. And we have a split, two and four. Strap bombers moving to the right to clear up these awesome, so much strap bomber fire. Got ASF engagement. Transport's going to break north going for a drop on the outside corner ASF are gonna pick those up but here is the story of the day four transports in the clear coming in for a drop oh dropping changing the arrow too many times when you retarget the drop the units have to recalculate their drop zone and that does slow down your drops three of them are gonna get their units on the ground and then strap bombers are pretty much gonna ruin that party and once again, mic cut. Sorry, guys. Strap bombers in even greater quantity than megaliths, which is kind of surprising. The skate this is online. Nuke defense has two in the pocket, and there are two in the nuke silo. That uh, that nuke defense is going to have to die if this game is going to go for the southern team. We got two fat boys pushing up mid. Attack launches against them. I don't think they're going to hit though because the Fat Boys did see that incoming and they're going to move. That Scathus is firing directly on the ACU over here, which is a tremendous waste of damage potential that should be firing at the nuke or some such strategic target because you're not going to kill an ACU with the comm shield on 
with a Skathis in any reasonable amount of time. The two fat boys are pushing up the mid. There is a horde of Percivals there that are accompanying those. Um, one Megalith moving over to the side to deal with the Percival threat over here. Strap Bombers dealing with the northern side. We're going to see a Tack Strike and the Skathis combined take down one fat boy. Tack Snipe on the other takes the shield down and a couple shells from the Skathis is going to do that one in as well. So that's the end of the Fat Boys. Percivals are going down rapidly to these three SACUs covered by a Megalith. And these units got the closest. They very nearly got to the Anti-Nuke. It did take a couple of hits, but all those Strat Bombers accompanied by a couple of Rambo comms here are going to be able to take those out before they kill the nuke defense. Here comes the nuke. It is definitely going to get caught. And I sure hope he doesn't launch back to back. And I think he is. Yup. Uh, because the second one will be caught as well. But I guess when you're in for last ditch efforts, you're going to do everything that you can and uh, not really give a second thought to, you know, I might better hang on to this nuke just in case. Alrighty. Looks like the onslaught of the south has been shut down. Got a Megalist standing guard in the gap here. SACU sucking up that reclaim for the southern team. Um, that is going to be a nice little mass gift there. Going to reclaim that. Skaith is going to lay down fire, looks like, on this base over here. And... I feel bad for any Percivals that move around to the northern side because you know that Strat Bombers are lying in wait for the unhappy occurrence of a Percival poking its head out a little too far. Got SACUs moving into mid and then rethinking their life choices and heading southwards. A lot of Cougars in the mix here. The uh, Tech 3 Mobile Anti-Air, a unit that I do dearly love. It is a nice little addition to the game. Two Megaliths facing off against all these Percivals. Honestly, the Percivals really don't stand a chance, especially when they're getting stunned by the SACUs. What? What madness? Reclaiming the Nuke Launcher to get a T3 stationary artillery online. Since when is there a stationary artillery on the peri on the hilly plateau? What is this? That is going to immediately begin firing on the Skathis if the northern team does not peg that down quickly. Um, the box quits? I think he did. Yes, he quits. Alright, so Box is down. Thankfully, Speed did build most of the infrastructure up here. So, Speed is going to reclaim his P-Gens and most of the nicer stuff. Although, some of the mechs did go down. Um, the Northern team has got to kill that Tech 3 stationary artillery if they have any hope of winning this. The Skathis is just out of range, though. That is a very major problem. The Skathis has already taken a couple of hits. It is going to run off to the side, but that's only going to buy a little bit of time. There's some more shields up here, but they are Cybern shields, which are very weak compared to the other factions. Uh, well, the upgraded shields are good. The problem is that it takes a lot of trouble to get to the upgraded version of the shield. So, uh, Skathis is not going to be any safer there than it was in the previous location, I would think. And uh, it is going to open back up again, but since it can't reach the T3 artillery, uh, that is eventually going to win over the Skathis, I think. I'm pretty sure. There is stealth over here as well, so that is going to save it. Soothsayer asking about Tele. He does have the Tele upgrade. Teleport. T3 mobile or T3 stationary artillery. Skathis is nukes on the hilly plateau. When did a land map like this escalate to this point? We have so many megaliths. There are now three megaliths online in the mid, locking down this pathway in here. There is no chance at all that any Tech 3, mobile, tech three land units are going to get through that gap once you get the critical number 
of T4 online, they pretty much shut down any hope of uh, getting any hope of Tech 3 units passing because they just die off too quickly. Looks like the Scathus is exposed. It has taken another hit, and the rain of artillery is going to continue as that Scathus gets weaker and weaker. Barossa sitting there. Speed 2 has an upgrade. Don't tell me he's got Telemazer. He has Teleport. He has Mazer. Apparently just waiting for the opportune moment. This is going to get a bit dicey here, pulling up on the end. Scathus is down. So the Northern team technically lost their biggest weapon, but down here in this base, we've got these three megaliths and a veritable army of SACUs that's pushing down. There is nothing here that can stop this. Um, there is a lot of Percivals, but not enough Percivals. And then the southern team has this Tech 3 artillery and a Tele commander of their own, although it is UEF. And they're about to have an Awasa. So they're... I, I can't even find the words to describe the, the amount of ridiculousness going on at the end of this game. What is going to deal the final death blow is anybody's guess from either side. This is a dead heat right up till the end. We've got a huge amount of Percivals loaded up into these transports. Don't know what he's doing carrying the Percivals away when there's a fight to be had right here. There is no more anti-air. The anti-air is badly placed. Once again, poor micro from the northern team. Um, that is going to leave these broadswords free to bear down on these units. Speed 2 has started a teleport. I don't know who he's going to kill. Awasa trying to bomb this stuff. It is going to bomb the SACUs. Well, if he goes down here, uh, he's going to have a bit of trouble because we have double nano and shield comms. That major is going to have a really tough time breaking any of those ACUs. And he tellied over here for some reason. Percival's incoming. These megaliths actually may die. There's a bit of poor micro on the Awasa. It did miss a couple drops, but oh, tax snipe. So much going on. Percival's dropping into base. Immediate carnage ensues. Verosa taking two tacks to the face. He's going to have to run. Looks like speed teleported. He's taking damage. Megalith coming to bear. One of them's going to go down. The other focus firing on this ACU. I see Nightmare's going to go up and Speed's going to go up. That leaves two alive on the southern team. All of these Percivals are going to die, but they've already done the damage. I think this is irreparable uh, damage to the northern team. And there goes all of Speed's units. Now you can see what's actually left. And T3 stationary artillery still firing away. Verosa is going to take the quit because he knows this third megalith is doomed. Doomed, I tell you. And 611 health. Not quite going to die. All right. That was some epic craziness. That is going to wrap up this game and this cast. I hope you guys are going to have an amazing new year. I got to say, this last year was one of the best years of my life. Um, although, I think next year is going to be better because I'm getting married. So, woohoo on that one. But, I wish you guys the very best 2015 that you can possibly have. I hope your holidays were amazing. And I hope that you will stick around for the new cast series. I would really appreciate your feedback on all of this, and uh, I will see you guys probably my next one's going to be out, well it's actually going to be out on my birthday I think. My birthday is on the 3rd, so I'll have a birthday cast, woohoo, again. <laughs> and uh, yeah, without further ado, I'm going to cut this cast short because my voice is about to be totally crispy fried. Thank you so much for watching guys, I will see you in the next one.